So I wanted to do a quick video on the difference between Amazon optimization or Amazon SEO and Google SEO. So in the past decade, we've built a Google SEO agency and an Amazon SEO agency, and they are completely different algorithms. Now, personally, I prefer Amazon's approach. I'm going to explain why in a second, but the on-page optimization part of both of these um, algorithms is pretty similar. So we're just going to run through super quick the on-page and then I'm going to explain the differences and the nuances and how to approach everything. Now, Amazon's on-page is quite basic. You have the same functions, keyword research, competition analysis, but because Amazon is a basically an e-commerce search engine, they only sell products and those products are already commercial intent. So there's not really any informational intent or anything like that. So you don't have to optimize for specific things like searcher intent, which you do in Google. And all you need to do, similar to this checklist here, you need to do keyword research and then optimize your product listing. The optimization part is relatively straightforward. You have your title, bullet points, copy, description. Obviously benefit-driven imagery is technically part of the listing, but from a like pure ranking point of view, it doesn't matter. And then the other parts are more around CTR once you're ranking and conversions of your listing through individual keywords. But that's all external. That's like the off-page signals or the non like controllable elements that you have. The difference between this and Google SEO, which is obviously on-page SEO for ranking websites, is you still have all of these um, different variations of on-page optimization, but it's a lot, lot more nuanced because obviously you have a lot more room to work with, with a website, and a website has something called a domain rating or a domain authority. And that's the core difference between if you rank or if you start a product on Amazon and your competitor starts a product, you both have zero reviews. You both are starting from exactly the same place. Whereas on Google, if somebody writes a post on Forbes versus you write a post on your brand new website, you won't rank and they will rank very, very easily. That's the difference between domain authority and basically starting from scratch. This, this is a guide from backlinko.com. Um, really good site for anything organic SEO related, um, especially Google optimization, really clean layout, etc. But we're going to focus and move on to some other things. So this is a, just another on-page checklist from HubSpot. And you can see things like external links, internal links, visuals, meta description. Um, they're just not a thing on Amazon. So Amazon's on-page factors are a lot more simple. That's the core kind of nuance of this. The difference between this and something like um, the off-page signals are why I kind of prefer and point people towards Amazon in general. So if we take a live example, we've got moss balls here. Now, this is just keyword. You can see this product is one we use for all of our um, case studies and examples. And if we have two listings, which I've already got open here, this one here has 20 reviews or 20 ratings. It's a brand new brand. And this one here has 680. The first brand does roughly 450 sales a month, something like that. So about 14 a day. The second one does 112,000 a month. It looks like it varies, but like a weighted average of about 300, 400 a day. Pretty successful listing. Now, if we take those tools, we can actually look and check what they rank for individually within Helium 10, right? So we will have run this before, so we can just load from history. This is the first example, and this is my main point. If we sort by search volume and organic rank between one and 30, the listing that only has 20 reviews can still rank for keywords relatively easily. So you can see they're targeting this sort of niche. No idea how to say that keyword, but that's the sort of target of the brand or the product. And they've got all these long tail keywords and they're ranking pretty well for quite a few terms. 780, near 2000 a month, top 10, another thousand in the top 10. You know, even this really big term, Moss Balls, 11th. The difference between this and Google SEO, or if you were to think of this as a brand new website, is the exact same point I just mentioned around domain rating. Now, if you try to launch a product and you had this as your primary keyword, even if you optimized your site perfectly, let's take a look, this will be a good example. I'm gonna actually check this keyword in Helium 10, uh, sorry, in Ahrefs. This is just a digital marketing software. Um, really, really good for SEO, just, you know, in general. And you can see we've got all of these examples 
but if we have a look at these DRs of these sites, you'll see that everybody in the top five has massive DR, even this SuperMOS one is pretty high in comparison, and they have the keyword in the domain as well and all the usual stuff. For a very niche, low competition keyword with a keyword difficulty of a zero according to Ahrefs. Now if we go down, we can see that these listings down here all have DRs of less than 10, right? And something like this probably has a better optimized page in terms of that generic keyword. So you see that's you know the actual product itself. But if we go up here, we can see Amazon, Spruce, you're just even Reddit, you're just not gonna outrank these pages, even if these products are completely different. And you've started to see this a lot with like the I would say the non SEO population talking about how Google search has um, got worse over time this has been going on for a while in the SEO community and it's been noticed five six years ago Google's basically made a point to move over to authority first versus relevancy first and they've been playing with this lever for a long time you know years at this point maybe even a decade but the problem is they've gone too far so if we take another example usually good ones are supplements and i'll just try and find one now so you can see here i've used forbes as this example and they rank for 14 million keywords right massive website dr99 or whatever it is but if we have a look at um, something around a keyword let's say supplement forbes is a business website so this should be very near zero but you can see that this is 10,000 keywords because forbes knows that if it writes posts about you know supplements even lion's mane which is a mushroom supplement that's meant to be good for cognition and things like that they've just got affiliate deals all over the place here right you can see at the bottom that's an affiliate code or affiliate link um, and it's kind of spammy but this Forbes health which you know if I was Forbes I would have done this as well it's just making it a lot less sort of they're only playing the game because Google is allowing them to play the game. Previously, medical and authoritative sites would have been the only ones to rank for this term or very niche elements. So there's probably more experts on this than these two people. And they're just playing the game of expert reviewed or etc. And it's just basically getting to a point where like the search quality of everything is going down because sites like Forbes understand the value they can make just by leveraging the word supplement in their actual in their actual kind of brand even though it's nothing to do with the original business finance investing type content that they had so if we go back to this one this is why i like amazon and youtube to a certain extent a lot more because you're playing the game from like a fair starting point where on Amazon, whoever has the best product at the best price and hence best reviews, optimization, yes, you need to launch a product. That's obviously what we do in a nutshell over on our website, AmazonSEOConsultant.com. You can get in touch. Um, we've ranked 500 plus products at this point. Just get in touch, see how our ranking service works. But this is why I like Amazon more, just because you can launch a product, you can have a better product and you can actually still win. Whereas you can have a better product on Google and the starting line for you, if you had a lion's mane mushroom that was cheaper, better grown, um, maybe more health benefits, I don't know the exact details, but if you had all of those things, you still would lose unless you went to Forbes and paid them crazy amounts of money and then they would still be the ones winning based on their website content that is not even related to it. That's the main difference, is that authoritative metric you have to have in Google to rank for pretty much anything nowadays, and that's why the quality of search is going down. On Amazon, if we take our other example, let's find this guy. Now, obviously this person, 112,000 a month in revenue, they're gonna be ranking for a lot more things, but if we have a look at the first 30 results again, or the first 50, you can see they're in fact first for that keyword. But instead of them making 100% or close to, as if they ranked in Google, the first top three results, the niche differences are a lot more noticeable. So this is where ranking for longer tail keywords in Amazon still works. Whereas in Google, for example, if we are trying to compete against Forbes and we take a different keyword, 
let's say we also have this product, but we're trying to rank for something longer tail. What we can do is we can go into Ahrefs. We can find a slightly different keyword. Obviously, this is still relatively similar, <laughs> but the same results are going to appear for pretty much every single listing, despite how much you change the keyword. YouTube is kind of, oh, sorry, not YouTube. Google is kind of putting these keywords together as a cluster and saying, okay, WebMD is now going to rank for everything related to Lion's Mane. So if we have a look at what they rank for, just bear with me a second. They're going to be ranking pretty much for everything related to this search. So you can see fourth, fifth, first, first, fifth, etc. So top 10 for a lot of major terms around this keyword. Fifth for the, you know, basically the term itself. So that's the difference between starting on Amazon versus starting on basically Google. Um, that's actually why I made the pivot personally with my personal brand and clients because we can rank clients on Amazon and personal products and earn from those in weeks rather than it taking months and years on Google. You can understand even from like a SEO agency owners frame. If I say, hey, you know, you're never going to be able to rank, outrank these people. We can get creative, target, longer kill, different search or intent keywords. But for commercial based intent, the amount of authority that you need through basically building links, I didn't really explain that too well, but the authority that you get comes from having a lot of other websites pointing to you. It's called link building. The higher the quality of that link that comes to you, the more link juice or quality that passes through. But that's how authority is built. On Amazon, if you and somebody else are starting on the same day, you're starting from the same spot. Now, obviously it's tough because people started 10 years ago on Amazon, that's the same thing. Their moat is a little bit different though. Reviews, ratings, um, things like that, rather than anything else. Now that will help with conversions, which will then help with rankings, obviously. Um, so indirectly, reviews are a ranking factor, but directly they're not. If somebody has 1,000 reviews and generates 10 sales a day, and you're targeting the same keyword and you have 100 reviews and you generate 20 sales a day through the same keyword, you will rank higher than that person, all of the things equal, okay? Whereas on Google, if somebody ranks first for lion's mane, for example, and you come in and say, okay, I'm gonna target lion's mane mushroom, you pretty much have zero chance of outranking them without building hundreds of quality links to your actual web page. So even if we have a look at this example, <coughs> you'll see the number of backlinks to these posts is just huge. Or you have something like this that's a basically a research paper directly talking about the effects of lion's mane mushroom. Then if they're just normal websites, Healthline, 2800 um, backlinks. Yeah, Pretty much impossible to rank. Value is very high, obviously, but that's kind of the game that you have to play. So those are the main differences between Amazon SEO and Google SEO nowadays. If you are considering spending budget for either one, I would always recommend Amazon now. Um, the higher commercial intent if you sell a product and pretty much a lot easier to rank for and a lot quicker. Still maybe expensive, but you can actually get some initial traction very quickly. Okay, thanks for watching.